Hello, and happy Thanksgiving. I'm Jack Larson, and I hope you'll remember me and my bow tie. For seven years, I played the role of Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter of the Daily Planet on the adventures of Superman. Those years were such a thrill for me, and so is being your host for Channel 9's fourth annual Superman Festival. It's so nice to be spending another Thanksgiving with you and your family. Before becoming the television series we're about to celebrate today, Americans got their first glimpse of the Man of Steel in the action comics created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster in 1938. The popularity of Superman soon moved on to radio, movies, and finally the TV series. None of us working on the adventures of Superman had any idea what a big hit it would become, including me. I made that discovery early on as I was getting up to leave a New York coffee shop. I suddenly saw dozens of faces pressed against the glass window and heard a mom of kids yelling, Jimmy, Jimmy. I had to think twice before realizing that they were calling me. Then I had to get the police to escort me out of there so the kids would go back to school. It was unbelievable. The Adventures of Superman starred George Reeves as Superman and Clark Kent, Phyllis Coates and Noel Neal as Lois Lane, John Hamilton as Editor-in-Chief Perry White, Robert Shane as Inspector Henderson, and me as Jimmy Olsen. Being part of the Superman family was one of the happiest experiences in my life. That's why this festival is like the icing on a marvelous old cake. And when I receive letters from children, parents, and grandparents telling me how much they enjoy our festival, it makes it even more worthwhile. It's nice to see that the magic of Superman touches the hearts of not one, but of three generations. I also received many letters requesting favorite episodes of Superman. So many that this year I've decided to make your favorites my favorites. So these are for Charlie, Sharon, and Sasha, and all the others who've written in. The case of the talkative dummy, filmed in 1951 and directed by one of my favorite directors, Tommy Carr, is a popular episode among many hardcore Superman fans, and it means a lot to me, too. It was the first time I got to meet George Reeves, and I'll never forget it, especially since I happened to be stuffed inside a safe at the time. <laughs> See for yourself as we launch the fourth annual Superman Festival with the case of the talkative dummy. I hope you enjoy it. Hello. I hope you're enjoying your Thanksgiving and the fourth annual Superman Festival here on Channel 9. I'm Jack Larson. Our next episode comes as a special request from a viewer of last year's special, and I'd like to request it too. It's The Semi-Private Eye, directed by George Blair in 1953. When Lois Lane's ongoing suspicion of Clark leads to danger, Jimmy exchanges his nose for news for a private eye. The writers of this episode knew that one of our featured actors would be Elijah Cook Jr., who starred in the classic film The Maltese Falcon. This led to the idea of Jimmy as a super sleuth, complete with trench coat, wide-brimmed hat, and Humphrey Bogart impression. Luckily, Elijah, uh, we called him Cookie, was quite amused by my impersonation of Bogey, and we ended up by becoming great friends. I'm sure you'll find the fun in the semi-private eye. So let's play it again. Adventure. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying Channel 9's fourth annual Superman Festival. The episode you're about to see was one of our more exotic adventures. Filmed in 1953 and directed by George Blair, The Magic Necklace features one of the series' favorite villains, Leonard Moody. We see him here playing archaeologist Professor Jody, whose magic necklace leads Clark, Lois, and Jimmy to the faraway mountains of Tibet. The Magic Necklace is a clever and entertaining program that brings out the best in everybody, especially Lois Lane, who finally gets the opportunity to kick Jimmy in the shins. I think she was waiting to do that for a long time. As for Noel Neal, the two of us became the best of friends, and we still are. Please join me as we watch the episode which made Jimmy a believer in magic. Here is the magic necklace. Hello, I'm Jack Larson, and welcome back as Channel 9 celebrates Thanksgiving and the adventures of Superman. Our next episode, Superman's Wife, 
was also a request from a fan, and I'm more than happy to include it in our festival this year. Filmed in 1957, Superman's Wife was one of two episodes where we actually see Superman tie the knot, and one where we discover Lois Lane's feelings for the Man of Steel. Directed by action director Lou Landers, Superman's Wife contains the talents of John Eldridge as a very suave but sinister villain, and Joy Lansing as Mrs. Superman. Ms. Lansing, who like Mamie Van Doren, was a mid-50s bombshell, has a figure that challenges that of the lovely Noel Neal. So sit back, relax, and join me as we meet Superman's wife. Hello. I'm Jack Larson, and we're about to wind up our fourth annual Superman Festival with our final episode. You might be surprised to discover that the episode we were about to see, The Perils of Superman, was directed by none other than George Reeves himself. Although filmed in 1957, The Perils of Superman has all the suspense of an old-fashioned movie serial, masked villains, buzzsaws, a damsel in distress, and lots of imagination. It also shows us that not only was George a superb actor, but a fine director as well. Whenever the cast of Superman knew George would be directing, and he directed three Superman episodes, we made sure we were at our best. There was a wonderful camaraderie among the cast and crew, and it was a kind of, let's do it for George attitude. I know that George appreciated it. This episode for me as Jimmy can only be described as a real cliffhanger. You'll see what I mean as we watch our next and final episode, The Perils of Superman. I hope you enjoy it. Hello. Once again, another Thanksgiving tradition comes to an end. I get such a kick out of being your host for Channel 9's annual Superman Festival. After all, it's the one day of the year when I have to wear a bow tie, but it's also the day when I'm reunited with people who've meant so much to me, both here and gone. People such as directors Tommy Carr, George Blair, Lee Sholem, Harry Gerstadt, producer Whitney Ellsworth, special effects whiz Cy Simonson, Phyllis Coates, Noel Neal, and, of course, George Reeves. Just like I'll always be known as Jimmy Olsen, bow tie or not, George was typed as Superman. But towards the final episodes, such as the ones we just saw, George was proving to be a fine director. It was one of his dreams, and I can imagine what a thrill it must have been for him to direct three Superman episodes. I truly believe that had he lived, George would have been known not only as the man with the X-ray vision, but the man with creative vision as well. In the spirit of one of our earlier episodes, I'd like to take this opportunity to say in memory of a very good friend, here's looking at you, George. And uh, to all my friends, thank you for letting me share my memories with you and for sharing your favorite adventures with me. I do hope you enjoyed the fourth annual Superman Festival. I'm Jack Larson, wishing you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving.